I'm going to London. Hey. I'm in London. Zip, slide, trying to provide for me. That's gonna be me up there. What's up, how you doing? You wrote that on there? Hmm? You wrote that on there? Yeah. Oh, my fault. Yeah. Let me see. Did you spell it right? Oh, yeah, you did. Know. You did. I it's did? supposed to be all caps, but it is what it oh, is. Okay. Yeah, so I'm doing a Burberry show. That's why I'm here. I'm about to walk and do the model walk for Burberry. Free flight, free hotel. It is what it is. And I got to be in London for 10 days. Quarantining, of course. I'm quarantining. Let me have that. Oh, thanks, man. We came a long way from Call of Duty videos in my mom's basement. I ain't gonna lie. Don't act like I'm Today, I'm gonna to tell you the story of how I met Dave Chappelle, and he gave me this $100 bill. You see a sign here, it says Dave Chappelle, and over here it says, match, loud, match, leave. It took me a while, but it says, it says much love. You know what I'm saying? So I find this link for comedy tickets that says, a smoking comedian will be performing tonight, and the password to get in to the website was G-O-A-T, go. It can only be one person, but I've been talking to a lot of YouTubers about this and they don't really seem aware. Like Dave Chappelle is probably the best comedian of all time. He's like at such a legendary status that it's like he's been dead for a long time. He's literally a living legend. It's weird. It's weird to see him in person. And he's aware of this. The first thing he said when he got on stage was, I was walking up here and I thought, you must be thinking, wow, this is crazy to see me. So yeah, we, we waited in line early. We got our good seats like right in the center towards the front or second row probably about six feet from the, the front of the stage. And we sit down, my dad's ready, he's ordering his drinks, and I leave. I say I'm gonna go take a piss, but what I'm really doing is finding some cigarettes because I've noticed that every time he does a show, there's always a moment where he's like, hey, you wanna get a cigarette? And the people are like, ah, ah. Usually he only performs in theaters, in like giant venues. This is rare to be able to see him in a room of maybe 150 people. I performed on the stage that I saw him at. That's how small it is. So I run, it's in Union Square, I'm looking, I'm asking the chess players who I usually, like you could buy a Lucy from, they're not doing it. I go to the Oc, the Oc doesn't have any. I have to go like three blocks away to a smoke shop. I buy a pack of Marlboro Lights and come back, I'm sweating. And my dad's like, did you just take a shit? Like, what's, where did you go? I'm like, hey, just don't worry about it. I just told him, just don't worry about it. The show starts, a lot of you don't remember, he had this uh, Comedy Central deal to make the third season of The Chappelle Show and he just disappeared for seven years. He went to Africa, people said he was a crackhead. He disappeared. <laughs> it was like he was Obi-Wan Kenobi and nobody knew where he went. So as soon as he gets on stage, this white girl comes and stands right in front of me because I'm in the second row in the center and she just stands up and like goes like this. Hi, I'm Crystal. <sighs> like, her, like this. <sighs> like she's looking at Jesus. Like her body language was, <sighs> you could fuck me right now. That's what she was doing. Security takes her out. That set the tone for the show. Like at this point, I know that they always say that you're supposed to see stand-up comedy live, but I prefer watching his, his specials because he doesn't need to do material anymore. It's enough to pay $200 just to see Dave Chappelle. He doesn't really have to perform um, with the same pressure that other comedians do. He doesn't really need to show up. But there were so many other great, like he brought Marlon Wayans, Chris Rock, John Stewart. It was so surreal to be like in a room with all those people at the same time. Questlove was sitting in the back and I'm like, yo, what's up Questlove? He's like, what's up? When I'm leaving at the end of the night, John Stewart's with a badass bitch. I'm like, yo, peace out John. He's like, all right man, have a good one. I'm like, that's John Stewart. It's just, it's hard not to be starstruck in those moments. And then inevitably halfway through Chappelle's performance, he, the moment comes where he's like, anyone got a cigarette? Boom, catch throw. Just like that. And afterwards people were like, that was, was that staged? That was perfect. It was perfect. It just, I, re I had it ready on the table the whole night. I'm just clutching this thing. I'm just waiting for that. So as soon as he said, we're gonna catch immediately. And then he does this song about Marlboro Lights. I don't really get it. I mean, I'm Gen Z. Uh, most of the uh, comedy audiences are all old. I was by far the youngest person there. He's singing this song about Marlboro Lights. I don't really get it. And then when he's done, he's just leaving the pack on the table near the DJ. I'm like, are you just gonna take the whole pack? I thought he was just gonna take one and give it back. And then a couple people laugh, it's a little bit awkward. He's like, who said that? And then like people are pointing at me. He's like, young man, he looks right in my eyes. He's like, young, young man, take this. Reaches into his pocket, gives me this $100 bill. Take this and let this be a lesson of kindness. No, no, let me do it in Chappelle. 
Young oh, man, and let this be a lesson of kindness. Just like how you gave me a cigarette when I asked for it, I'll give you a $90 profit on it. And remember to be kind. Or you could spend it on some pussy. And people are like, ah, ha, ha, pussy. <laughs> it's weird because like he said that he made this whole thing about kindness and then did 30 minutes of trans jokes. But yeah, that's besides the point. After the show ends, uh, I want to get an autograph on this thing. Like I just had an interaction with, literally to put it in perspective, my last commentary, Dave Chappelle's in the thumbnail. Like the whole, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and that was a stretch. That was me like using his face for clickbait. He's, I feel like it should be understood, but I was talking to YouTube friends and they don't, they don't like, oh, Dave, who's, who's that? So anyway, uh, after the show, I'm like, I need to get an autograph. So I'm like grabbing people's check pens and I get up on the stage. I'm like, yo, please autograph it. He tries autographing it and it's a pen. It's not that good and it's scribbling. And he almost gave up. And I'm like, nah, come on, give me, give me an autograph. And he gives it um, and he writes so much love. And then afterwards, after the show, there was a, an after party downstairs and I have to go. My dad went home because he's old and he needs to sleep, but I needed to go to see that show. Uh, so I was able to, to sneak up my way in. I know a couple people at the door. There's this one lady, the manager hates me there, and she was like trying to like not get me in there. But I was able to, I was able to, I was able to, you know what I'm saying, just, just dust it off. There was one moment where she's like, um, don't come downstairs. We're still like trying to see if everyone is, is, and then she's like walking away. She's looking over here. I see the entrance. I see her looking away, and I just walk into the side of the fucking thing. And then Donnell Rawlings is on the microphone. Uh, there's like 50 people down there, there's food, there's drinks, there's all these comedians, there's all the celebrities that were at the show. And I'm eating and I'm dancing, like, you know, just having a good time, trying to enjoy the party. And then there's Dave Chappelle standing on the stage, still, after the show, and there's like 50 people. I'm trying to like, they're playing all, all the music that I listen to at every other party, like, fucking Biggie, Dreams of Nightmares, and I'm rapping it, like, I used to break the times like this to rhyme like that. I see Dave Chappelle up on the stage, it's matter of time I spit on some locked up shit, and he's like, we're... You know what I'm saying? Like there's, it's just so, I do this at college parties and there's, it's him, you know? And I'm trying not to look at him too much because I'm just trying to be a part of the party and you know, like you don't want to engage with celebrities too much. But at the same time, like he's standing on the stage even after the show, like he just, he likes it. He likes the attention. He likes the limelight. That's, that's him and his element is this being the center of attention. There were a couple times where I wanted to go up to talk to him. I, I mean, I kind of did. I talked to him for like half a second. Like he's on stage and I go up to the front. Uh, I don't remember what I was about to say. I started saying something and then this girl comes up and starts like trying to dance on me. And then there's this moment in my head like, do I continue this conversation with Dave Chappelle or do I let this girl grind on me? And I go to the girl and then I'm dancing with the girl. And there was a fan there and I hear the, the fan's drunk as fuck. He got kicked out later on. And he's, I hear him say in the back, from the back, he says, uh, hey, that could be you, Dave. Dave, that could be you right now. <laughs> Come on, why would you do that? Well, I know you're, why would you do that? Uh, and then he got kicked out and then the girl got kicked out too by the, the lady who didn't want me to get in. So the night's almost over. I talked to his wife for a bit and uh, it's funny because she's Filipino and their kids, Dave Chappelle's kids look like exactly like me. So I go up to his wife and I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm like, I kind of look like your son, right? And she's like, eh, yeah, you can say that about most mixed kids. All right, fine, she didn't want to have so I go up to Dave and I'm like, hey, what you did, um, that, that was a really big moment for me. I, I really appreciate what you said. Um, I'm a new comedian. This is the first stage that I ever did a show on. So just what you said, that, that really resonated with me. I really appreciate that. And he, he nods. The lady who didn't like me pushed him away from me so I couldn't have more of an interaction. And then that's it. And then I have this $100 bill and I have the memory. And I don't really know what to take away from it because... That's what I wanted. That's why I went to the show. I wanted to have an interaction with him. I wanted to have that moment. I wanted to be able to, because he, he's now, he's like, he's more than a comedian at this point. He's like a philosopher. People come in just to see him. And like, that's when he's at his best is just when he's completely engaged in, in a story or in the moment or telling a lesson or he's like the old wise man now who comes and comes and goes and like those, he's like a Dumbledore, you know? And I've been looking for like a deeper meaning than, than, than what I got, but I guess it's just as simple as being kind and to, and to spread that type of kindness. You know, the energy that you put out comes back to you. The, this whole manifestation thing is being talked about a lot, but it, there's something true to that. What energy you put out, you, you'll get back. So if you're kind, people will be kind to you. That was like a main character moment. I felt like the main character. That was one of the most <laughs> protagonist moments of my life. Oh, by the way, Patreon supporters are like, oh, I already heard this. I told the same story 
on Patreon already. So if you want to hear stories early, you gotta get on the Patreon. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for watching.